Turbo Conquering Mega Eagle. Hello, folks. How you doing? Cement mixer. I guess this is part two. Um, this lovely cement mixer restoration. So, I'm just uh, just currently working on parts, getting them outside, um, getting them in a state where they're ready to be prepped for paint. Um, after last week, we did uh, I think the major fabrication jobs. Uh, getting the, the stub axles on um, on the original axles so we can put uh, nice um, nice wheels on here with bearings on them. I've got all my um, original bearings out the out the drum assembly and the drivetrain assembly just blanching nicely in the uh, in the parts cleaner at the minute. Uh, right, let's see how they look. Yeah, they need a little bit. They need a little bit longer. Uh, just, just really, I just wanted to inspect them um, before I regrease them and start fitting them back when when bits are painted. So uh, we'll avoid the possibility of um, crap getting back in them. Um, we've got the uh, the bearing out the or the bearing housing out the out the centre of the drum in the vice at the minute. Look at the size of that beauty. It's like a it's like a wheel bearing out the back end of a twin wheel transit or something, you know. Heavy, heavy stuff. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. They, they, they don't build them like that anymore, do they, eh? Alright, okay. And um and because I've got a new pressure washer recently, <clears throat> much bigger than the old one. Um if any of you watch my uh video on grip blasting a bicycle frame with a pressure washer, yeah. Link up here if anyone's interested. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's the way to go with uh, grip blasting at home. I, I had a ever so tiny um, pressure washer back then. That was something I bought for for travelling to jobs, and um, yeah, it did it work 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 beautifully, work very nicely. But since then, I bought myself a much bigger pressure washer. So I've also bought myself a much bigger attachment to. Um, to grip blast at home with the new pressure washer, so uh, you know we'll have a bit more oomph, um, and uh, we'll, we'll give this a go. Um, I've, really, I want to um, attack all these parts with the with the needle gun. Get the uh, the needle gun. I have shown you the needle gun. We're not talking about it. Um, That's the needle scaler. Basically, we've got a bunch of needles at the front, and they just, uh, they, you know, just chatter against the metal. This is really good on pretty solid steel, so you know you don't want to go attacking a, a car, car bodywork with this, um, and it doesn't really get it clean. Um, all we do with this is uh, knock the really crusty stuff off. So um, you know, it's, it's actually excellent on the uh, remnants of the cement. Yeah, and um, uh, also on you know heavy chunks of flaky rust and that, but it only really works on heavy steel, so it's perfect for this mixer job. But um, yeah, after I've uh, after I've knocked the knocked the heavy stuff down with this, we'll hit it with the uh, hit it with the grip blaster, and then if I want to do any further finishing with um, uh, with a dual action sander, we can we can flatten things off like that. So. I guess it's just working through things. Um, before before we paint the main body of things, I've ordered up a new sprocket. I, um, I want to leave the uh, the engine. If you remember, we got the engine running. It seems to be running quite quite nicely, so I'm, I'm not going to worry about uh, stripping it down. Look, there's the little AA1, um, and uh, like we can increase the RPM of this to match the 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 chain and sprockets that I've got that came with the mixer but um, I think what would be better is leaving this engine well alone uh, leaving it set to 1500 rpm with a um, 750 rpm from the camshaft output which is currently set up to run um, and putting a different sprocket on it so Hopefully before the end of this video, my new sprocket will arrive and we'll have to... It it's, comes as pilot drilled, yeah? So it's only got a little half inch hole through the centre of it. But we'll have to enlarge that to the inch shaft that this engine's fitted with. And then cut a keyway with the uh, with the mini hand-powered shaper that we all know and love. 
Yeah. <laughs> All right. So those are the those are the jobs. I suppose you better get uh, better, better get stuck in. Um, first thing, I'm going to switch the ultrasonic bath back on and uh, just finish off working on this hub because there's a the remains of a bolt stuck in one side and we need to get that off and then I'll chip the cement off that and that can go outside and wait for paint. We're doing pretty well with these bearings, you know. Um, this is the worst one, and I mean, it has got some some uh, corrosion on the on the cage there. This is the outer outermost or innermost um, bearing in the in the drum itself. Yeah? Um, so maybe we weren't completely completely watertight in the. Uh, the drum the end cap there yeah so it's got some it's got some corrosion on the on the cage but no marks on the uh, on the races themselves you can just about well I, I can just about see in there <laughs> on the race uh, I'm not sure whether you can yeah it's pretty clear there's no no water marks or anything like that okay so I think I've got all the greasy bits cleaned up now um, all the little bits and bobs, got my uh, my bearings and chains all uh, bagged up. Anything anything that's not cast iron's bagged up in there, and uh, got a little bit of light oil on it so we can get some grease on it after we assemble it or during. Um, a tiny bit worried about this uh, this gear. I don't think the wear's that bad to be honest. Like you know, looking at the profile, I've I've seen them like fucking um, you know where the where the silhouettes altered drastically due to where it is starting to go on this one but um, it's not so bad uh, I've been looking into you know TIG, uh, TIG brazing but I, I don't want this to be my first attempt and it will definitely work as is so uh, I'm going to leave it for now um, the only thing with this is like when it when it does bind it will probably do a bit of damage um, so Hopefully I'll hear it getting noisy over the <laughs> over the noise this thing makes, eh? Um, this is this is bolted in temporarily with the uh, you know with these two bits in the mixer back together, just so I can get an idea of where it's going to sit. And I'm just going to again temporarily put the sort of headstock back in. And um, but before we do that, we've got to fit the. The new sprocket up onto the uh, onto the engine. Yeah, so this comes pilot board. I think that's a ten mil hole foot at the minute, or three eighths or something. Um, and I think the the shaft on this engine's um, an inch. So I want to put this in the lathe. The uh, the cheap cheap Chinese chuck. I don't trust this to be uh, concentric enough. So uh, um, I might chuck it up in here and then put the put um, the test indicator on it but I'll, you know if not I'll just put it put the full draw on and uh, try and get it properly centered Chinese companies
Right then, folks, we need to uh, cut a keyway in this uh, in this here sprocket. Sprocket. Um, that can only mean one thing, obviously, can you? The old dusty box of goodness. Gosh, she is. <laughs> what a what a beauty, eh? Okay, so we can line everything up. We've just got the um, the drive sprocket or the driven sprocket uh, mounted up in, in one bearing here, uh, just just to get the distance that way correct. A bit spacer in there, uh, and we've got the chain on the engine at the bottom. That's great. Everything's everything's more or less lined up, and we've got a bit of a we can adjust the the sprocket on the engine. We've got at least a quarter inch either way, uh, so that's fine. That's fine. It's well within where we want it to be. Right, I've just had one of those moments. Uh, I've realised, yeah, despite having spent um, a couple of evenings after work starting a uh, a lovely, great, big, heavy duty chain tensioner, what I'm trying to do with this mixer is make it as simple and robust as humanly possible. Um, and really what I should be doing is just uh, just getting the chain a bit shorter and, and packing out under the engine with washers um, and then removing them as and when the chain t stretches something like that would have been definitely definitely it's the way to go and I'm feeling a bit silly but uh, whatever I don't mind I don't mind admitting it folks <laughs> you know uh, I'm having fairly long days at the minute and uh, um Whilst this is turning out very nicely, uh, and would have been an epic chain tensioner, I think I'm just going to um, go with washers under the engine, because, you know, why not? Huh? <laughs> right. Washers it is then. Okay, so one of the last two jobs was to have a look at this bearing, which was the original reason for taking this whole mixer apart. Yeah? If you recall back to episode one of the mighty mixer build or whatever whatever I've called this um, yeah because I, I was convinced that it was well it, it was evident that it was spewing grease out of um, this side of the bearing and I was convinced that it was cracked and it actually looked like a cast bearing uh, or bearing housing and like it was missing half of it then when I pulled it apart I realised it was fabricated i.e. built up out of many pieces of steel and welded together and now that I've cleaned it off a bit. Um, there's not actually anything missing from it. This is uh, this is how the Lord F. O. Brian in intended it to be. Yeah, um, <laughs> that leaves me in a bit of a pickle, doesn't it? And the other thing is, is I suppose it's the one little thing I don't like about this um, this whole mixer. And there's there's nothing really I don't like about it apart from how this is put together. That's a uh, a top hat, yeah. You know, you know what a top hat looks like. So it has a rim and a cylinder coming out the other side of it, uh, and it's just just welded in there. And the balls, the ball bearings, are they must have um, you know assembled the ball bearings in this collar, slid the top hat in, pressed it into the frame, and then uh, and then welded it in place. Um, 
which I, I you yeah. know, I, I'm sorry, I just, I just don't like the yeah. idea of that. Like they've done such a beautiful job with the other bearing, bearing housings. You know, it's all done properly in, in nice big lumps of cast iron, and and uh, I mean this has this has a grease fitting on it. Um, I suppose this only has to. It's, this isn't turning constantly, is it? This uh, this cradle for the drum the yoke, I suppose. Um, yeah, but you know, it's not that nice, is it? Either way, uh, that's how it's meant to be, and there's nothing actually wrong with it, and it seems to be in pretty good condition. So I'm, in the interest of time, uh, just <laughs> just gonna leave it, folks. Okay, so that rem that leaves the one remaining job, which is um, uh, building a cowling for this uh, this here motor. I mean, there's lots of remaining jobs, isn't there? But the only the the last uh, the last fabrication job, yeah. And then after that, it's just painting stuff, really. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, 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 just painting stuff. Um, no, not just painting stuff. Building a uh, building a lid for this old girl. Hmm? Yeah, that's the next job. Let's uh, let's get on with it. So we've got to put some uh, some nice louvers in the side of this lid for the for the engine. Um, uh, rather than use the bead roller, yeah, because this is two mil thick metal. It wants to be nice, thick, chunky metal. No, never puts thin thin metal on mixers. Not even not even modern modern day diesel mixers. You know, it's all nice heavy metal. Um, rather than use the bead roller, I've just made a little. Um, um, what do you call this? Little forming, forming thing, you know, that sort of thing. Forming, yeah, I've just made a little forming thing. Uh, a little go freehand, it seems to work okay. It's not going to get them perfect, but it's a cement mixer, and I think if we get them perfect, it's going to look a bit odd, isn't it? But um, this will put nice deep louvers in for lots of cooling, so it can it can spit the. Um, cooling air out so there's a this engine actually breathes from the from the bottom so there's a nice big gap at the bottom for it to suck fresh air up but um we've got to have a, a couple of couple of louvers in the side there for um for it all to come come out of the engine yeah only one side the other side nothing really happens isn't it everything all happens on one side of the engine but um where my, where, <laughs> all right, the most important thing here is getting it all the right way round, the right way round, isn't it? I've just uh, I've got the hole for the exhaust there, and I've cut out those slits. Haven't made the tool for the little one because the little one, the little, the little tool's just going to be the big tool cut down. Yeah, so hopefully I get the big tool. Hopefully I get it right with the big one first, and then we'll cut it down and use that to do the little ones. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that makes makes a decent amount of sense. Mateys, how was that for a nice lever? Hey, in two mil steel, yeah. 
It uh, works pretty well. Works pretty nicely. Do I go a bit deeper? I'm risk shagging it. Um, I think I think so. I think so. I think I do want it a little bit deeper. Famous last words, folks. Famous last words. The experimental metal work. To infinity in in the scrappy. Yeah, not very even. Let's just try and even it up a bit. Yep. Okay, let's leave it there. Let's leave it there, folks. Oh, we're levering, folks. We are levering. <laughs> Look at the levers on that. All right. I'm going to put some gloves on quickly, though. Where are my nice gloves? Considering that's all pretty much freehand with the uh, with the dolly and the former, uh, I'm quite happy with how this has turned out. You know, it's almost too neat for a cement mixer. You know, uh, they're nice, nice thick louvers though. That's gonna that's gonna let a lot of air through and stop the rain getting in, isn't it? Hey, awesome. Let's cut it down and do the little ones. I might have got a little bit carried away, folks, and uh, I put a I put a lip around the inside. It sits there beautifully now, and it's uh, brought this side. This side had um, picked up a bit of a warp because of the welding of that ring and the uh, and the louvers, but it's all nice and straight now. Um, yeah, I, I I had contemplated rolling uh, this rear section and putting a bit of curve on there, but um, I'm glad I went square now. It fits the. Uh, Fits the 70s styling, doesn't it? <laughs> you know? Yeah, perfect. All right, let's uh, let's knock up some beefy hinges and then uh, probably going to call it a day, to be honest, on this uh, episode. But we'll uh, we'll get those nice hinges done first. Not nice, heavy, industrial. <laughs> Okay, so the, the engine lid is finished. Um, oh, I think it came out alright. I 
he came out alright we've got some nice heavy hinges here all right, yeah, not all the bolts in because I've got to take it apart anyway holes are drilled and I stuck some ears on the I wel welded them straight to the mixer because um, bolts didn't feel appropriate hey? um, not for attaching them um, obviously we're, we're bolted through um, for the hinge pins and uh, yeah four four M8 bolts each side we've got the lovely louvers done there exhaust outlet um, she can breathe all the clean cold air she wants through the bottom there that's where the uh, the pickup is at the, on the engine it's just uh, you know around the around the bottom so that's good um, I did weld uh, another flat all the way around the outside of this lower section of the cowling um, you know it just makes makes it mate up with this edge a bit better she's gonna get knocked around a bit you know that is inevitable as night and day <laughs> so uh you know it's, it's not a beauty contest it's uh it wants to be nice and rugged though and i think i think i've achieved that um yeah without going over the top um yeah maybe it's maybe it's you know just the right amount of over the top all right <laughs> Okay, I'm not entirely sure. I can't actually remember what I've done on this on this episode. I've dragged it out over a few weeks. Uh, just finished another um, another little contract at a factory. Uh, don't know when I'm when my next one starts. Actually, I'm sure I'll get a call this afternoon. Having said that, and I'll be um, I'll be busy. But uh, but what? Yeah, it's very important. I get this mixer finished. There's no point finishing the whole until this mix is finished. Basically. Um, but I should be back down the hole anyway. Digging away, and got a couple of other things going on. But um, so I don't know whether the next video you're going to see is going to be finishing off this thing, which should just be paint and reassembly, or a whole video. Which you know, if you get a whole video, that'll be the finishing of the shaft, won't it? So uh, yeah. Anyway, I hope you're enjoying the classic cement mixer rest of mod so far uh, it seems to be going nicely and we should have a nice mixer at the end of it a good tough solid mixer that will last a long time um, the forever mixer if you want yeah wouldn't it suck like if I built a uh, nuclear fallout shelter and uh, you know like I come up after all the radiation had cleared and my mixer was melted It'd be fucking rubbish wouldn't it but um, you know I think we're on the right sort of lines that this will be a uh, this will be bomb proof wouldn't it hey? all right Okay, take it easy folks, and I'll catch you all again soon. Bye-bye.